Hello me ATVDs, welcome back to my channel. I'm so ready to get some makeup on and cover these up. Ew. I don't know what my hormones are doing. They are just on their own, flying free, doing their own thing. But for this video, I wanted to do a tutorial showing you guys some of my favorite summer glowy products for oily skin. If you have oily skin, you know it is super difficult to find like really good dewy glowy products that don't make you look super oily. And right now is the time of year to really bring those products out. If you have oily skin, you know that you most of the time choose a lot of matte things. But I want to show you how you can achieve that like dewy glowy look that'll last and won't look super oily throughout the day. So I'm here to tell you it's possible. You just got to find the right products and also use a combination of like matte and then dewy and matte and dewy. It's just, you kind of have to pick the products that are really going to make your, your foundation and your makeup last while still having that really pretty glowy effect. So if you like these types of videos, be sure to give this one a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I do upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. All right, you guys, I'm going to scoot you a little bit closer. Let's put on some makeup. I don't even, I seriously don't even know what's happening with my face because I haven't worn makeup in forever. I think it might be a face mask that I tried out recently or I just didn't clean my beauty blenders enough. I don't I don't know what's happening. But you know what? Makeup fixes all. First, I'm gonna go in with the Catrice Hydrating Prime and Care Spray. This has aloe vera, matcha tea, and pantheol in it. This has been a recent discovery when I was trying to find a dupe for the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. I would not say it's the same exact thing, but I would say it does a similar thing on your skin. It hydrates, it refreshes before makeup, and just adds a little bit of hydration before you apply all of your mattifying products. So I'm gonna go in with this. And just a side note for this video, I tried my hardest to include a drugstore version of the product that I'm using that can somewhat be comparable because I hate videos where you watch them and someone's talking all about like amazing products that are supposed to do wonders and it's all super, super expensive. I'm someone who likes drugstore products. In fact, most of my collection is drugstore. So I want to incorporate some affordable products for you guys, even if I'm using higher end or more expensive products, you do have options at the drugstore that you can use to recreate this look. So again, going in with Catrice Hydrating Prime and Care Spray. If you want hydration in a bottle, this is it. It does have a little bit more of a forceful sprayer than the Smashbox one, but it's not bad. I'm just trying to like hurry up to fix all this on my face. Either take one of two primers. This is the Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer. This is so, so good if you want your skin to be blurred, poreless, and very smooth for makeup application. It also helps keep you a little bit matte. And then this is also another good one. This is the Tatcha So Canvas Primer. I know this is an arm and a leg to pay for. So this is a more affordable option if you don't want to pay the $52 or whatever this is for this product. I'm gonna go and use the Tatcha one just cause I haven't used it in a while. I'm, I've hit pan, as you can see, and I don't want to get rid of this cause I know I will not repurchase it. I might repurchase the mini size. So I'm trying to like not use it. But regardless of the primer that you use, doesn't have to be the specific one, but I would just recommend a mattifying, smoothing primer. If you have oily skin, I would stay away from a primer that says dewy or glowy because primer is supposed to be like underneath your foundation, supposed to help kind of keep your face matte even if you have more of a dewy or foundation. It just helps keep your oil at bay underneath all the makeup that you're putting on top. So I would recommend like put on glowy products on top of your foundation rather than put on a glowy primer underneath your foundation. If you want your makeup to last, definitely don't apply something that says dewy or glowy as a primer. Speaking of foundation, these are the two that I would recommend. The first one is the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. This is a smoothing foundation, but it's also a serum foundation. So it's going to be a little bit more dewy. It's not insanely dewy where it's you cannot wear it if you have oily skin. The only thing I don't like about this foundation is the color range. This is like the lightest shade and it's way too dark for me. So this is like the drugstore version of the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Luminous Makeup Foundation. I have the shade Porcelain in this and I know it says luminous and it's scary when you have oily skin and you're like, I don't want my oil to show through. It's just not 
no. This is a foundation that claims to be luminous that I can wear. I know dry skin people love this foundation, but I also know that Casey Holmes has very oily skin and she really likes the foundation as well. So I'm gonna take a beauty blender. I always apply like most of my foundations with the beauty blender. I took a couple pumps of that foundation. This definitely is more on the glowy dewy side, but on top of the Tatcha primer, it's gonna like hold down the four underneath the foundation so that the foundation appears to be more glowy and dewy, but on underneath, you have something that's gonna help elongate the wear time and also be on your skin side when it comes to your oil coming through. When you apply this foundation, it definitely looks glowy, but I'll show you how I like make this a long wearing semi like satin natural finish using the powder that I'm gonna use. I'm probably gonna say oily skin like 8,000 times in this video. If you count how many times I say oily skin, leave it in the comments. Let me know how many times did I say it and how many times did I annoy you saying it. Even though I do have oily skin, I am less afraid of foundations that say luminous or glowy because I know that I have some really great mattifying powders that are going to help keep this foundation looking nice and more of a natural finish and also last throughout the day. And even if you put on a mattifying powder on top of this foundation or on top of like dewy or glowy or luminous foundations, it doesn't mean that it's gonna stop that luminosity from coming through. It just means that it's probably gonna show up a little bit later in the day and it's gonna keep you matte at the beginning of the day and then probably like halfway through, you're gonna start seeing that glow come through a little bit more than when you first applied it. And that is how I am able to wear luminous, dewy, glowy foundations. I cannot have it looking like this without setting it with something and have it last throughout the day. Especially this foundation is a little bit tacky so you can't even blend product on top of it. I also like this foundation because it has a decent amount of coverage. I would say that it's probably like medium coverage and those are the types of foundations I really like. When I'm filming this, we leave for Georgia in two days. Have it packed, are you surprised? If you watch my vlogs, you know I'm a huge procrastinator. Well, only when it comes to packing. I'm a, I'm a packing procrastinator. I'm a procra I'm a procrastinator, a pack procrastinator. Yep. And I make sure that I kind of drag this down my neck a little bit. All right, foundation is applied. I am going to go in with my all time favorite concealer. This is the Born This Way concealer from Too Faced. This has a very nice natural, like a satin natural finish. Does not make me too oily or too dewy. I am not about to put a dewy concealer underneath my eyes. It's not going to last. It's not going to work well. I'm going to take the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I would also take the Makeup Forever Matte Skin Velvet Powder that I love. I love, love, love that powder. I'm just kind of giving it a break. I haven't used my Laura Mercier one in a while. This is a mattifying powder. So if you're not about mattifying, use a powder that does not claim to be mattifying. A good one would be the RCMA No Color Powder. This is a very neutral, in the middle setting powder. It's not going to make your skin super dewy. It's not gonna make it look super matte. It's just to set your foundation. And you can still see the luminosity from the foundation coming through underneath the powder. So even though I am setting this down, it's looking a little bit more matte. It's okay, because I promise you in a few hours, I'm gonna be looking a little bit more dewy than I do right now. Make sure I really set my T-zone where I get oily. It is my chin, around my nose, and on my forehead. I'm gonna go ahead, apply my NARS Tinted Eyeshadow Base. I have the shade Light. A good dupe for this is this from CoverGirl. This is the CoverGirl True Naked Queen Ship Cream Shadow Stick in the shade 900 Prima Donna. I would not say it's an exact dupe, but if you want a eyeshadow base that has a little bit of coverage from the drugstore, this would be it. And I'm gonna set that down with the same Laura Mercier powder. One of the reasons I really like applying pore reducing and smoothing primers underneath luminous foundations is I have pretty large pores in my around my cheeks and if I don't have some type of smoothing base, the luminous finish on the foundation is just going to like emphasize my pores. Gosh, I hate foundation on my lips. 
<laughs> who else feels like that after you apply your foundation you're like you gotta get it off your lips for eyebrows it's the same old Anastasia Beverly Hills brow whiz and I'm also going to set them down with the clear brow gel so I'm gonna go do my eyebrows be right back they're not important to this tutorial, so I'm just gonna skip on through them. Let's go in with bronzer. I'm gonna take the Too Faced Sweethearts Bronzer. This is a Baked Luminous Glow Bronzer in the shade Sweet Tea. If you want something that is drugstore friendly and more affordable, you can use the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer in the shade Sunrise L1. They both are, have, have a very similous, similis? similar, and I don't know what kind of word I was trying to make, but these are what both of them look like they both have a very similar finish. I was trying to make similar finish, similis. So this is what they look like. I'm gonna take again the this one because it, oh, it's so good, but this is also a very good option if you want something a little bit cheaper. So I just apply my bronzer as normal. I mix both shades in because one is a little bit lighter and one is a little bit darker. And I don't know if it's picking up well on camera, but I was noticing as I was doing my eyebrows, you can start to really see that glow come through. And I've sat here for like, I don't know, 15 minutes doing my makeup so far and it's already starting to show the glow. Such a good bronzer. It's a very good one for summertime. It makes you look very tan and like you got some sun. This is a luminous bronzer, but I know what you're thinking. Don't be scared of it. Luminous bronzers are not bad if you find the right one. There are a lot of luminous bronzers out there that do not work well on any skin type. They just look really weird because it's supposed to be a shadow underneath your cheek and if it's glowy, looks kind of weird, but this is not one you have to worry about. It just has a little bit more of a glow. It's not considered necessarily matte, but it's not so, so luminous that it looks weird on your skin. Next product, blush. I'm gonna go in with this Becca Mineral Blush in the shade Flower Child, just cause I love how pretty and how gorgeous this blush is. It has little, little small gold reflex in it, like gold glitters, but it doesn't come off like that on the skin. It just adds a very pretty sheen to your cheeks. A drugstore option would be the Milani Baked Plotter Blush in the shade Luminoso. We all know this. And it's a little bit more peachy, definitely, than the Becca one. But if you're looking for a drugstore glowy blush, this is my favorite. I haven't found another one that I like better. And you only need a small amount of this blush. See, it adds a very pretty glow to your cheeks. Highlight. Highlight. This is where it's at. For me, it's the ColourPop Indodendo palette. I really, really, really love this palette. If you want an all-in-one highlight palette, this is so good, you guys. I mix these two shades together. Those are like the only two shades I ever use in the palette. But if you're looking for a higher end one, that's also so gorgeous. And I think limited edition, so if you haven't picked it up, you should. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy highlight. It's a little bit more gold, whereas the In Nudendo palette is definitely more champagne so that's kind of the difference there this is extremely affordable especially for highlight palette the Amrezy highlights a little bit more expensive but it's not so expensive that it's ridiculous so it's like still on the affordable expensive side this just takes the cake for me it's my favorite highlight and it's the longest lasting highlight that I have I can put this on at the beginning of the day and I will still have it on at the very end of the day I don't have any other highlights that really do that so I'm gonna take my highlight brush if you are curious I use the Sephora Pro highlight illuminator 98 brush and I'm gonna take a mixture of these two seems like it gives me like a good mix of champagne and gold apply this to the high points of my cheeks gosh it's so pretty and reflective doesn't look chalky or dusty it doesn't look glittery it looks like a really pretty metallic sheen on the cheeks see look at that how do you beat that and take it down my nose at the tip of my nose. This is how you give the effect of having a very glowy, luminous foundation, even though you have a base that's going to last you a really long time. Like you apply it to your cupid's bow down your nose, at the tip of your nose. You can even come up here, take the excess from your brush and bring it up above your brow bone just to add a little bit more of that glow. Gosh, if you guys haven't tried this palette, please pick it up. ColourPop has amazing highlight palettes. That's just my favorite. Whenever I put this on, I can't stop applying it because it just looks so good and you cannot overdo this highlight. This palette, 
is amazing because you can still apply as much as you want with a heavy hand and not look overly highlighted. It doesn't look like too much, like ever. It's just the perfect amount of glow. If you want to, you can also add it to your chin, on your forehead, but I'm just, I'm gonna leave it on my cheeks and my nose and my cupid's bow. Face is done. I'm gonna be taking the Jaclyn Hill palette for my eyes. You can take any palette that has these really pretty lighter pink shades. I love doing this like light toned pink, very pretty feminine look in the summertime. So I'm gonna take a regular fluffy brush, start going in with some shades. I'm gonna take a mixture of these two right here and I'm throwing this in the crease just as a transition shade. I do wanna keep this look very light and summery. I don't wanna add a ton of really dark shades in the outer V. I don't want it to look super smoky. I'm gonna take the same brush and go in a little bit with this yellow shade right here. Then I'm gonna take this shade right here. It's my favorite shade in the palette really to put all over the lid. It's a very nice light pink shade. I take it on my finger and go all over the lid with it. This can almost pass as like a white pink kind of. Like it's like a champagne pink. I'm gonna take this shade right here and apply it as an inner corner highlight. Then I'm gonna take a pencil brush and I'm gonna take the same two shades that I went in with in my crease, mix those together and buff them underneath the lower lash line. Then I'm gonna apply some mascara. I'm kinda iffy on whether I wanna do lashes with this look. I feel like it could look really pretty with lashes. If I went in with lashes, I would go in with these Kiss Lash Couture Faux Mink Collection. These are the Little Black Dress Lashes. I think I might try them, and if I'm not feeling it, then I'll take them off and just do another coat of mascara. I'm gonna take my regular mascara, the CoverGirl Lash Blast Fusion. This look truly doesn't need lashes. Don't feel like you have to do them. I just haven't used these ones, and I kind of am interested to see how they look, and I also wanna just try lashes again see if my technique got any better than the first time I applied them. I have this little lash right here that's sticking straight down and it keeps poking my eyeball and it's like, what do I even do about that? It will not go back up to its normal curveness. Just is a very stubborn lash, folks. Let's try the lashes. Like I said, if they look dumb, worse, we'll take them off. Again, here's what the lashes look like. I'm gonna be taking the Eye Glue Premium Lash adhesive from the same brand, Kiss. These are so pretty. I should probably do just a little liner in case, like just, just, just to do it, just to cover the lash band because this is a black lash band. The Ardell ones that I tried before were not. They were like a clear lash band, which is so much easier. But I'm gonna go ahead, apply some liner. This is the Physician's Formula Eye Booster just to my lid. I'm not gonna do a wing or anything. And then I'm gonna try and apply these falsies and I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Yep, these are officially my all time favorite lashes that I've ever put on. I feel like they actually fit my eye. They don't look too like in your face, but they're very fluffy and they're longer than my natural lashes, but only by like not a ton. You know what I mean? Like it, they're not going all the way up to my eyebrow and that's what I like. I like them to look a little bit more like wispy and volumizing and they were super easy to put on you guys. Like I do not do, I don't mess with false lashes very often, but I gotta say this was probably the easiest set I've ever put on. It took me maybe five, 10 minutes and that is like record time. I think last time I sat there for a good 25 minutes trying to like taking them off, putting them back on, taking them off, putting them back on. It just didn't work. But these ones, you guys, I feel like you can still see the eye look even though I have false lashes on and that's a plus. So yes, I'm definitely gonna be purchasing more, more of these cause they fit my eye. I think I found my favorite set of false lashes for five bucks. Mm, I'm so excited. All right, for lips, I'm going to go ahead and line my lips with the NYX, what is this? Nude suede shoes, lip crayon. Oh my gosh, I can't stop looking at my eyeballs, you guys. All right, now that I'm lined, which I never do, I don't know if I really believe in lip liner, although I do see that it makes it a little bit easier to not go outside of the lines on your lips. I'm gonna take the shade Still Crazy from the ColourPop Matte Lipsticks. 
I don't know if they have another shade or another name, but it looks like this. I also have a nude shade. It's called Layover. This one is my favorite from the line. These are very, very comfortable matte lipsticks. They're very affordable. ColourPop kills it. They just do. Oh, I still went out of the line. <sighs> Lip liner, you failing me. I actually think this is one of my favorite looks that I've ever made on my channel. Let me know what you guys think. Do you want me to do more looks like this? Cause I'm digging it. The last step to finish off this look is to use a setting spray. You want to keep the dew going, but you also want to make sure that it lasts. So even though we applied like really long wearing primer and powder on top of our foundation, this just helps ensure it seals the deal, makes everything blend a little bit better. I noticed that the powders that I place on my face, like my highlight, my blush, my bronzer, just makes it sink into the skin a little bit more. And I hope you guys can see it on my skin now. You can definitely see that there's a glow happening on my skin. I'm gonna apply my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I have not found a better setting spray that I like. And the inner corners of these lashes aren't coming off, guys. I picked a more matte lipstick because I didn't want to over glow my skin. Like I want my skin to highlight, my eyes to highlight the look and just keep the lips neutral. And I think this is a very pretty shade to go with this look. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so much. I hope you had a great day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.